This video is brought to you by Nokian Tires, a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made-in-USA all-season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantires.com slash EV. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. This is an electric classic mini and it is not just any electric classic mini it is the nicest electric classic mini i'm sure anyone could imagine it's done by gildred racing in collaboration with electric classic cars for this particular one i'm here in just outside of san luis obispo california closer to santa barbara where they basically handed me the keys to this 120 thousand dollar electric mini to enjoy for the day. Now, it's no secret I'm a Mini enthusiast. I used to daily drive a classic Mini in high school and did some really stupid things in that car. I'm really glad I'm alive. Um, <laughs> it's a miracle I'm alive, but they are so much fun, so great handling. They have such great character and personality. One thing that was never amazing about the Mini was the engine. Mine was a 1275 in particular, but there was a whole bunch of versions all the way from 900 and something cc's up to almost 1400 when you got into the fuel injected cars. And the Mini was never known for its impressive powertrain. It was an engine that was used in a whole bunch of other things, very primitive, but they put it in this really cool car. So I'm a huge fan of electrifying classic cars that are not known for the engine. This is one of them and uh, it's pretty freaking awesome. I'm gonna take you on a full tour of this Mini today, and then myself and my friend Andreas behind the camera, we're gonna go for a drive here in the beautiful hills just outside of Santa Barbara and enjoy this in one of the most beautiful places of the country. <laughs> So this, of course, is a classic Mini. It's a relatively early one. We're thinking, I don't know the exact year, but maybe 70s, somewhere around there. It's technically a Mark III, I believe. But there were so many versions, so many iterations, but ultimately the classic Mini has always kind of looked like this from 1960s all the way to 2001 was the last one they came off the line. I'm just, you know, sort of remembering my old mini knowledge. I used to be a huge mini enthusiast. I still am. I love them. Uh, all the way from the classics to the BMW era, of course, which is a little bit sacrilege for the classic guys. And of course, there'll be a few people in the comments saying, oh, you can't electrify this car. It was meant to have its crappy little four-cylinder engine. I disagree. I think minis have always been meant to be modified, personalized, and turned into your dream. They've always been a blank canvas for me to enjoy certain changes and typically i've always improved my minis from a performance standpoint on my classic i actually did some style things i did rally lights up front and union union jack on the roof and it's just great to be able to go back into one of these cars now this is done by gildred racing and gildred racing is basically just outside of santa barbara in this area and they have been making the craziest classic minis ever they have this rear engine supercharged v6 500 horsepower classic mini that they offer It's a roughly $200,000 conversion uh, and, and total modification for a finished one of their products. We're not talking like, let's just drop a VTEC engine into one of these with one of the extensions on the front to get a little bit more uh, length on the chassis. These guys go through and change the body. They actually get the, every dent out of the shell, have them professionally repainted, completely reupholstered on the inside. They go through and make them better than when they were new because they were kind of crap when they came out of the factory and they were built in a bunch of different factories all around the world. So Gildred Racing is like, you know, the top 1% of the 1% of minis and mini owners. I mean, truly expensive, high quality things. After experiencing this vehicle today, there's nothing that will ever come close. So let me tell you what's going on with this particular car. Well, the price on this one is on their website for $120,000 done completed. 
You can technically buy this car, but they're gonna be building a run of about 20 of them. Pre-orders are open now. You can get them in. They're gonna start deliveries here very soon. This is sort of their engineering car, just testing everything out. It's the press car, of course, so we're able to make some videos with it. And I believe we're actually the first media to really get to drive this car and review it and enjoy it. So I'm really lucky to have that opportunity. It has a 31 kilowatt hour battery pack in there. I believe it's NCM chemistry. It comes from electric classic cars. And I'll put in some B-roll under the hood so you can kind of see. It's really nothing to see under here. It's just basically the top of a battery module. And the battery is broken into three modules. You have a few kilowatt hours up front, a few kilowatt hours under the rear seat here. And then if you come around to the back, I can show you in here in the trunk there's another higher load floor where they have another battery module so you have three separate modules powering this and it is the electric classic cars conversion kit but you know gildred of course is doing all the installation all the integration the interiors the bodies they're probably into this thing for close to a hundred grand cost i mean this is not cheap stuff it's crazy how high quality this car is and it, for, you know, in terms of dollar for inch of vehicle, it's gotta be the worst value out there. But you don't buy this for a good value, you buy this because it's so freaking cool. It's an amazing daily driver. The size is perfect. So many people want small electric cars. Well, here you go. And there's a lot of really rich people who want small electric cars to drive around. Well, here you go. Uh, inside the rear trunk here, behind some of the carpeting, they have BMS controllers. They actually have ways where you can set charge limitations. You can really dial in your bottom pack voltage, your top pack voltage. And I'll show you some of these things as we get closer as to how this car is tuned. Um, charging it, interestingly, J1772 port right here. I think we may ask them to put a NAX port on the vehicle. I don't see why they wouldn't be able to do that. But here you go, J1772. It's a 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger in this particular one. Um, no DC charging. They said they were considering to do DC charging, but they thought, well, the customers aren't really going to be doing high road trips in these things and going out and around. I mean, we would probably be the only ones if we ever got one to do that. Uh, and the batteries are not liquid cooled. This is an air cooled system. And so they were like, we didn't want a Nissan Leaf situation where the, they would degrade over time. This is a huge investment, but you're also spending a lot of money with a known mini modifier or improver or aftermarket company that will really help it retain its value. Going with something like this, your overall cost, you're actually gonna have something of significant value when you go to sell it. This is just my impression because it's a known quantity. The Gildred Racing Electric Mini Series is gonna hold its value better than Ken's one-off, I don't know who Ken is, but I'm just making up a name, Ken's one-off home DIY conversion, if you will. So you spend up the money for it, but the car is going to hold its value. And because of the wait times, you may not actually even lose a penny because they just have so many people that are interested in products like this. So uh, the Classic Mini has 300 horsepower from a Tesla Model S motor up front. It's the front drive unit out of a Model S and uh, it's just situated down here. They've done their own um, sort of chassis changes and things to make it work. It retains the original wheelbase, uh, which is just crazy, and 300 horsepower sounds wild. Now there's two modes to drive the car in. There's standard, and then you can pull what I believe was originally the choke to get into sport mode, and I'll show you some of the controls on the inside. But 300 horsepower in something this small just seems absolutely insane. So, hey there. Um, you know, what, what really is there more to say about this? It uses an upgraded but stock size braking system. So you have uh, drum brakes in the rear that are finned for extra cooling, a slightly larger disc brake up front, but I'm looking at it and it's literally this big around. <laughs> so, you know, the actual regen of the front motor is gonna help this thing slow down so much more. Inside, a wonderful hand-picked fully nicely done interior. This is the perfect interior for this car, wouldn't you say, Andreas? It's beautiful. Yeah, take a look inside. You can see the headrests are all nicely done and it's just every millimeter of this car has been gone through and completely modified and improved and upgraded. I mean, it is an interior that is, you know, similar to those classic Porsche upgrades and conversions and resto mods. This is on that level. Everything bespoke, everything super high quality and uh, I couldn't love it more. Now. I'm a fan of like rusted out minis that are all, you know, ratty and you don't feel bad about 
crashing them into stuff or bumping them into parking lots. That's not this. <laughs> this is one that you just, you know, really want to take some care of and enjoy. And, and for us to have the opportunity to drive this vehicle is truly insane. Like I mentioned, quite expensive. The value is going to be pretty good. And what you get is a whole lot of smiles, a huge talking piece. And for the people that are thinking about going for something like this, the number that I quoted, you know, right around $120,000, it's not going to scare them away at all. These are people that have the McLarens, the Lamborghinis, the great big car collections, and they're looking either for an interesting daily driver for them or their partner or however it might be. Um, they are not going to have any trouble selling 20 of these electric conversions, especially when you see how well it drives because the integration of everything is just next level. Um, so let's jump inside. We'll get the GoPros in and everything, but I kind of want to show you just the switch gear. So I'll open the door for you, Andreas. You can hop in there. If you switch to wide view, everyone will be able to see everything and I'll get on the uh, driver's side and let's take a look at the switches, the knobs and all the stuff that's going on. The door openings, the egress, everything about getting in and out, just like a normal mini, so easy. Big room here. This one does not have a padded dash, so it just goes all the way to the firewall. It actually, for us two big guys in this thing, Andreas, doesn't feel bad. No, I expected it to be worse. <laughs> yeah, not bad. This particular one doesn't have air conditioning, but you can option it. It does have heat, has a resistive heater right under here. There's a separate fan, just like old mini pretty much. You can change where the fan goes. All is pretty normal. In terms of gauges, we have a few gauges here. We have our motor temperature. So we're at 40 degrees Celsius on the motor, a very healthy, normal temperature we have been driving in a little bit. We have our speedometer and fuel gauge, and then we have our battery pack voltage right here. So it seems like bottom cutoff voltage is gonna be in that 260 range, and full, I believe, is 380 volts, 384, something like that, 387. I forget the exact number, but we're pretty much fully charged. I mean, the range on this, everyone's gonna ask, is um, they quoted 150 miles under gentle, you know, around town driving. But uh, they were like, you know, if we really rip on this and have some fun, they basically say like this thing rips the front tires off everywhere. Uh, you're going to get 100 miles, 80 miles, somewhere around there, which is more than enough for what I think people are going to use this for. And of course, throughout the day, you can top it up at level two charging stations. So uh, beautiful Momo wheel, new leather wrap. The seats are new. The shifter is interesting, actually. It's in the place where the manual transmission would be, but it's pretty simple. It's forward, neutral, and reverse. You just tick it into each position. So that kind of makes a little bit of sense. Um, and I really love the integration of this. I believe this comes from electric classic cars as well. Those guys seem really cool. I know they do some content as well. I'm a big fan of all their work. It's really next level. So love all that stuff. Um, in terms of uh, using this thing, I mean, it's really not hard. Put it in drive and go. Put it in forward and go, I should say. the This car is sort of their first one of this. This is the proof of concept. This is for them to do shows with, to, you know, let everyone know that they're building an electric mini series, a very high quality electric mini series. So there's a few things that are going to change from the motor controller. And I was like, how hard would it be to get a model three motor in this thing instead of model S? And, you know, maybe they were even thinking about doing an all wheel drive dual motor. Like they want to go crazy. These guys are nuts. They built a 500 horsepower version of this thing with an engine in the back that's supercharged and it's just as crazy. So they're like, Death Machine, yes, we want it to absolutely rip. And this thing absolutely rips. So what do you say we get the cameras up, go for a drive, we're on this beautiful road. We've still like driven the car very gently, right Andres? Just because, oh, yeah. and, and even then it's been like, oh my God, this is crazy. So uh, we haven't even put it in sport mode, which doubles the power when you pull this. Uh, so that's 150 horsepower and that's 300 horsepower. <laughs> we have not tried it with sport mode. We figured we'd wait for the camera, but honestly, it was crazy without that. So this is going to be one hell of a ride. Let's hope we make it out alive and um, let's go have some fun. This is the best day at work ever. So camera's on and we go for a drive. All right, will you join us inside the Mini now? And uh, well, all you can see is Andreas with a phone in front of his face, Hello. but we're trying to get a few angles for you guys. Our filming equipment isn't perfect for this particular one, but if you can see down here, I've put the vehicle into forwards. 
We'll go with the handbrake off, so that all kind of works out. We have light controls, heat, uh, windshield wiper controls. We have our sport on and off. We'll go sport off to start. Nice horn right here on the side. This one doesn't do anything, but this one does. And it's hot as hell, so let's get on the road in the Mini. Actually, I think I need to just adjust this camera position here slightly. Sorry, folks. It's just I can tell I was already messing it up. Let's see. It's not ideal, but it'll get the job done. So let's, uh, let's head off. Andreas, you, I've already shared some thoughts about this since we're just getting going. What do you think? I just love it. My initial thought was, you know, old meets new. You can buy a classic Mini with a Tesla Model S motor. And I just love the combination of both. Me too. Past and future. Yeah, the past and the future. And, you know, driving this car as a daily driver, like there's no power steering, but it's still, especially at speed, extremely nimble and easy to drive. And it feels super nicely calibrated. And we're on this a little bit of a bumpy road here, but it's soaking up the bumps quite nice. There's honestly not very many rattles or squeaks but uh, that you know a lot of that also just comes down to finding a really good original mini to then convert to be classic so I think that this uh, they chose the right body here to show the car really fun and quick steering as you would expect from a mini a couple little potholes just avoiding there and it's you can just go right around and through things it's amazing uh, big trucks on the road this is no problem I mean the road feels huge compared to if we were in a bigger vehicle so I believe we want to go I'm not really sure I think left up the canyon road so we'll go left here and I think the first thing we really need to do is a full throttle acceleration. What do you say? Oh, yes. Okay, so we'll come to a stop and floor it. Just spinning tires, torque steer. <laughs> it's so fast. Isn't that crazy? It is amazing. Um, and it just feels like it's pulling itself apart. And it's a little bit darty and there's some torque steer. And then that's when I tell you that's half power. <laughs> so I haven't even tried full power yet. So that's full power. Are you ready for this? Yep. Let's do this. <laughs> I think you should hold the phone down so everyone can see a reaction when we floor it. <laughs> we won't even use this this video clip. This, okay, for this, okay. So okay. yeah, yeah. You ready? Yes. Sir. Okay. <laughs> that's I light off. It just, it just burned rubber everywhere. That was crazy. <laughs> Amazing. That was absolutely incredible. And I think we, uh, <laughs> this truck behind us would definitely seem to like it. <laughs> Smells great. Beautiful road, beautiful car. So much fun. Wow. And now we're out in sport mode, cruising along on these amazing roads. Once we crest the hill, I, I, we haven't even experienced real power yet because we've just been spinning tires. You know, to think a Tesla Model S motor is powering this very light, very small car. And yeah, this, this conversion definitely adds some weight. I'm not sure of the exact weight that it adds, but in terms of cornering, it still feels quite nimble, uh, but also soft in a typical mini fashion. It's not like they put on a racing suspension on this particular one, if they will. They really have gone and put on a I would say a, a soft daily drivable, you know, sort of suspension just to kind of cope with the extra weight, but not necessarily for performance or handling. But oh my gosh, the power rolling into it here. It's like just spinning the tires at 50 miles an hour and I'm having to, to let off to modulate. Uh, there's no traction control or ABS in this particular one, uh, but just... <laughs> it's so fast. It is so fast. Isn't that crazy? It is unbelievably fast. That's <laughs> very German of you. It's unbelievably fast. <laughs> I'm running out of adjectives here. Relatives. <laughs> um, it's incredible. So, what do you say we just continue going for a little bit of a drive? Let's enjoy these views here. And uh, to think you have, you know, let's just say driving it normally, realistically, 100 miles of range 
in this car that's more than you would ever need to go around town. You know, I could pretty much do Denver and back in this thing if I, uh, you know, charged when I was down there, for example. So go down for a meeting, keep it on a level two, and then blast back up. You get uh, all of the benefits of a classic Mini, but when driving like this, nice and gently, you know, it, it feels just like any other electric car. It's refined, it's quiet. And then the only crazy thing is when you just sneeze a little bit on the throttle, and it just covers distance like nothing I've ever experienced in a classic Mini. I've driven some spicy classic Minis in the past, and I mean, truly, this is, this is crazy. And the scenery around here, wow absolutely beautiful i just love how much fun this vehicle is regen really pulling us back in as we slow down here and get over into the corner and we're fighting some torque steer and you really have to wrestle this thing when you drive it hard it's amazing but you can see here on our gauges we've slightly warmed up the motor but nothing crazy the motor is liquid cooled uh, as are some a few other components maybe the onboard charger is not but inverter and motor definitely are you can see it's actually coming down on temperature um, and then here we have our voltage meter so as we regen we'll gain some voltage and as I output power you'll actually watch <laughs> you'll watch the voltage sag the pack sag as it outputs a lot of current to this motor um, it's crazy because you're taking this car that was never designed to have more than 40, 50 horsepower, 80 horsepower at the very most, and you just dump 300 in it. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, they have a, one of these with 500 horsepower. That must be death. That's crazy. Wow, I am just in love with this vehicle. It's so small and easy just to squeeze to the side. And it actually handles really well, like just coming through these little bends, like just the tiniest amount of steering effort and input. It's directly connected. You retain so much of that original mini steering feel that you know and that I love at least, where the car is playful and enjoyable and puts a smile on your face. But now, rather than having to work the car and ring out the revs and you're always worried about the engine braking in some way or another, you just have a reliable Tesla drivetrain in this thing with uh, electric classic cars battery pack. This one again being 31 kilowatt hours gross, but you will be able to get a version uh, soon that will have 37 kilowatt hours gross and maybe 34 usable is the idea there. And just send it through some of these absolutely epic corners and roads. Yeah, you do have to muscle it around, but that's because they put a freaking huge ass amount of power in this car and you just put your foot down. <laughs> it's stupid. It's really freaking stupid. I absolutely have to have one of these things one day. I don't know if I could. It's $120,000. We can split it. We can split it. There we go. <laughs> Still spinning, still spinning. I had to let off. It was just gonna spin tires forever. <laughs> How fast would this thing be if they could actually get a tire that made traction on oh, this? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, we need a Pilot Sport Cup 2, please. 11 inch wheel. <laughs> you gotta beat the plaids out there. Yeah. It feels like way scarier than the plaid. Way scarier than the plaid because it just is like the whole car was never designed to have this much power. We just took air. <laughs> the brakes feel pretty good. I can hear they're drilled because they, the rotors make a little bit of noise. But just kind of sending it through this little area. <laughs> what a road. Perfect for this car too. It's tight, twisty, technical. Very enjoyable. Andreas, you have to drive this car. This is... I can't this, wait. This is crazy. This electrifying these old cars that were never known for their combustion engines. Wow! And just managing the throttle. It's like we're doing a hill climb race. <laughs> right at the limit of grip everywhere in this thing. And it's so fun and it feels really solid. Look at this, hucking it into the corner, lift off over steer. It's got a limited slip diff up front so it gets the power down. throttle it spins both tires definitely has a limited slip diff 
and then you're greeted with these views up at the top of the climb that's a road built for this car and then you have the downhill where we can regen down it's a race car in a cute looking mini like i could see my mom driving this i could see my sister driving this and look great and then i could see you and i going out for a canyon blast it's like minis have always been classless vehicles they've never been for a particular type of person but i think maybe even more so now that this really brings this performance crazy sporting edge into the mix what's your impression andreas yeah i was thinking it's definitely a uh auto -spec mom car <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> not sure how auspic dave would fit in here but uh... actually i once uh road tripped my classic mini like 400 miles with my dad amazing <laughs> yeah well, all we would need is DC fast charging for this thing, and we could take it on a road trip across the country. Absolutely. So liquid thermal management and a DC plug. Exactly. And send it. <laughs> wow. Well, this was epic. Let's go into town, do some exploring, and then we are definitely taking this road back. We just got some B-roll shots. First time ever on Out of Spec. Actually, it's not, but we don't do it too often. This car definitely deserves it. Of just some shots of this thing driving around these beautiful winery roads here. And uh, I thought Andreas had to take this thing for a spin. I so I think maybe the best way to ease yourself into this, like what we did, is use, you know, normal mode first. Yeah. And then we can go. <laughs> it's so crazy to drive. It's I can't wait to try it out. So um, the accelerator reminds me of my, the first car I've owned, which was a Volkswagen Golf 4. It's very similar feeling, yeah. <laughs> a lot of travel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. It's not the sharpest, yeah. uh, but it is, you know, you can see these little pedals down here. <laughs> yeah. Wow, what a cool driving experience, though. I mean, this is a, a car to put a smile on your face every single time. Oh, yeah. And on a narrow road like this, it really does feel like we're in a tiny car. It does feel like. I feel like being back in the 50s, looking at this front here, the, the blue color, the, the shape, it's truly like, a, I don't know, when was it built? The, the car the built? 60s, right? late 60s, 60s yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, a little bit of time, time traveling here. Yeah, I think we can flip around here and then we'll take the Canyon Road back. Yeah. Uh, one thing that's interesting about this vehicle is you cannot put a price on experiences. And this vehicle has all of the experience. And it's just one of those things, you, you're never going to get a driving experience like this never. anywhere else. It's so unique. It's so different from anything on the market. And it is amazing. Well. Let's go enjoy some views. <laughs> We're off in the mini. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, there you guys go. The time in the electric classic mini was just absolutely epic. Great roads, great scenery, and most importantly, a fantastic car to do it in. So much fun, big smiles, and such a little car. I absolutely love minis, and driving one that's electric is sort of a dream come true. I'm actually just about to head out into their 500 horsepower supercharged V6 one, so head to my personal channel, Kyle Connor, for that video. <laughs> from the Electric Classic Mini. Seriously, visit their website, take a look at the information. You can get on the pre-order list if you're looking for, for this. It's a very niche car. Of course, most of you won't be able to spend the money for such a really kind of niche use case of a vehicle. But those of you who can, 
this there's nothing that compares they will sell every single one of these that they can make they can't make that many of them maybe i don't know 10 15 a year or something like that but we'll see how it all plays out we'll be keeping in close touch with these guys can't thank them enough for letting me review the classic mini we'll see you on another out of spec reviews video soon leaving you now from gildred racing bye bye